we were just talking with Mark Kobrick and Dr. Paul Coley a bit about how to get through summer safely, but a lot of debate this week about sending kids back to school safely in the fall. We also are getting updates on progress as far as potential COVID-19 vaccines. So our nine health expert, Dr. Paul Coley, is back with us live now to talk about that. Let's start with school, doctor. Uh, many people think it's pretty clear that in-person learning is important and necessary in a child's development. The key being, is it going to be safe? How can we make it safe? Do you think in-person learning will be safe for students this fall? Look, Tom, it's really quite simple. If the cases are going up in the community, schools are essentially just a microcosm of our community. So, you know, if the cases are going up and schools open, we are going to expect to see an outbreak in schools, even though there is scientific literature that kids are less likely to spread the virus and less likely to get sick from the virus. But it's an inevitability. So if we look at the facts today, we have 41 states with rising cases. Colorado is one of the top five states in terms of being in the danger zone and having an increase of greater than 50% over the last week. We are really far behind in Colorado in testing. So we're one of the last states nationally in terms of how much testing we're doing. So if you ask me today whether it was safe to open schools, I would say it really isn't based on the data today. But we do have four to six weeks to turn this around, and I'm really optimistic that if we get all hands on deck, come late August, early September, we can get our kids back to school in a safe manner. And that's tough to hear because if you talk to every parent, every teacher, every school district, everyone is trying to come up with an answer, a reason uh, to do what they think is best for the kids, of course, and, and for everyone. What would you say are the fundamentals, the, the precautions that could be exercised to reduce risk in schools? I think we really need to think about it, Tom, is really stepping into the swimming pool one toe at a time. So we can't just open the floodgates and do an all or nothing. So the first thing I would recommend is a hybrid approach. So a lot of parents are deciding between in-school and stay-at-home learning. And I would say do two days of in-school and three days of stay-at-home or some sort of hybrid like that. So you're minimizing the exposure, but at the same time, harnessing the benefits of in-school learning. We should try to group kids into staggered schedules because that's fewer people at school at any given time, and it also allows for easier contact tracing. So there should be a seven to one you know, school shift and a nine to three school shift. And then once you're in the school, we do need to make some changes. We need to space our desks six feet apart. They should all be facing in the same direction to prevent that droplet transmission. We need to install you know, hand washing stations outside of every classroom, prevent congregation of kids at lockers. And then when it comes to younger kids, I would recommend face shields and older kids, I would recommend masks. And I think if we instill some of these changes, it's not gonna be life as usual like it was before, but I do think we can get our kids back safely and really harness those benefits of in-person learning. There's so many discussions about schools right now that we could literally talk about it for an hour, and it's something we probably should do sometime, get teachers together, uh, doctors together, and have a conversation about this uh, to, to try to get people prepared, because some people are being asked to make a decision now, and we know how this has gone over the past four months, that things change radically over the course of a few weeks, a few days even, where information is changing. So uh, with that, I need to change the subject, because we could talk about school forever, but the news from Moderna uh, we're talking about COVID vaccines now. How optimistic are you from the early results that we're hearing about this latest vaccine that seems to be moving forward? You know, I'm very optimistic about it, but I haven't gone out and bought the Moderna stock yet. I don't know if you bought any, but, and, and the reason is because the trial is still small. So the trial was very encouraging. It was 45 patients given two doses of the vaccine. They all mounted the right amount of antibody and had minimal side effects, but there's still a lot of outstanding questions. Um, safety signals really emerge in the bigger trials. This was only 45 patients. How long do these antibodies last? Are they enough antibodies to fight the virus infection itself, which we don't know yet. And then finally, there was an underrepresentation of minorities as well, only one Asians, two black and six Hispanic patients in the trial. So we really do need a larger size to get all of our results answered. But I'm very excited because they have shown that what you would take years and years of science, they've done it in a few months. Well, we certainly have an appetite for any good news. So when it does come, we, we really wish it the best. So uh, we'll see what happens with this one and, and other people trying to come up with a vaccine. Dr. Paul Coley, thanks as always.